Welcome back. Market has, in fact, uh, reacted to Janet Yellen's speech. It is up uh, on the session. We're about 45 minutes into the trading session. Meanwhile, conflicts in Iraq, Ukraine, and Gaza have been weighing on the public consciousness, uh, certainly for the past few months. But so far, very little impact in terms of the market. The S&P 500, of course, yesterday hitting another record high. I want to bring in my contributors now for the next hour. Hank Smith is Haverford Trust Chief Investment Officer. And Paul Dietrich is Fairfax Global Markets CEO and Chief Investment officer as well. Gentlemen, good to see you. Good to be with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate that. Uh, let, let's talk about this market ignoring uh, the geopolitical uh, story out there. Uh, are you surprised? Uh, a little, you have to be surprised uh, that it's ignoring that, but I think part of it is we're five years removed from the financial crisis. There's been a lot of healing and confidence is starting to take over from fear and anxiety, although you wouldn't necessarily notice that in the fund flows where more money is still going into fixed income rather than equities, which is amazing given the level of interest rates. Well, I think that's a really good point because the truth is, is if you're looking at the stock market, that's telling a different story than what the bond market is telling. Would you agree? That, that is true. But just going back to what's happening in the world, I think you have to drill down a little bit um, because we do look at, at geopolitical risk. Uh, in Israel and Hamas, really, that has no effect on the stock markets. Uh, Iraq only has an effect in, in terms of oil and because Kurdistan is continuing to uh, uh, export through Turkey and the southern uh, Iraq is exporting, there's really no impact on the oil markets uh, with that and I don't expect that in the future. However, the Ukraine, we are seeing if, uh, this morning in the New York Times that there's a stealth invasion going on now where hundreds of Russian soldiers are coming in in unmarked suits every night. Um, and if that heats up, uh, that could have an impact because that affects Europe uh, and it affects natural gas and that will affect earnings in the United States. It's the only area that I see that could be a catalyst for an unexpected correction that I think a lot of people believe will come. And in fact, you've got Russian trucks right now, the convoy, uh, they've, they've gone into Ukraine. Okay, Ukraine is calling it an invasion, and Russia says, no, this is aid for people. But, you know, oil, I'm surprised oil is not higher right now. Do you think that's a sense that people feel like, look, America is going to be energy independent? Well, I think that has to be a big part of it, and that, that is a big long-term theme of the U.S. economy is the energy renaissance that's uh, going on and uh, becoming uh, energy independent, as you, as you mentioned. Uh, I think that uh, plays into it. There's a glut of uh, natural gas. There's a glut of oil. Would you would you buy Russia? Uh, no, um, I don't. I don't invest in any country that doesn't respect shareholders, and Russia certainly doesn't respect shareholders. But with regard to oil, if if oil prices are going down because of lack of demand, that's not good. But that's not the case. It's oversupply. I mean, we're at a 28-year high in oil production in the United States. Earlier on this year, Iraq, uh, Libya, which was a major oil uh, exporter, exporter sure. they went down 90 percent. They're now fully back online because of the conflicts that they were doing. Nothing has changed with Iraq. And so the, the world is awash in oil. So when, when you have more supply than demand uh, because of, of production, uh, your prices are going to go down. You made a good point in terms of Europe and the impact that we could see if, in fact, this accelerates. I mean, you have to bet that it does accelerate. Putin is not backing down. So do you want to avoid Europe? Well, look, these are global companies in Europe. Um, and uh, I don't think you want to avoid it entirely. And go back to the 90s where the U.S. economy was the engine of global growth. We may be entering that period right now where the U.S. economy brings along of uh, the developed uh, global economy and even to a certain extent emerging markets as well. I don't know why people would be investing in Europe right now. The economy is stagnant. Yeah. And, They're talking and about we're depression. growing. They're talking about depression and we're growing here in the U.S. You've got to be an idiot, uh, you know, not to be investing where the growth is as opposed to where the stagnation is. And if the Ukrainian situation gets worse, that will that will be a catalyst for a real downturn. You saw how the market reacted when the Banco Espiritu Santo, the Bank of the Holy Spirit, you know, defaulted a few right. a month or so ago. That we had triple digits uh, down in the Dow. I think all the risk is to the downside of the market now, and and 
the, the bad news will cause real downturns, and the good news doesn't seem to, to really boost it up. Uh, that's massive. what I want to ask you about next. We're going to take a short break, but, but Hank and Paul, you have differences in terms of buying stocks or avoiding stocks right now. You're finding value. You're not finding value. I want to talk about that next. General, stay with me. Coming up more with Paul and Hank. Could the U.S. economy be long overdue for another correction? We will talk about that, and we'll find out where, in fact, the value and the growth is in this market. Back in a moment on the opening bell.